Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and today I'm going to show you how to straighten and crop your images in Photoshop CS6. It's slightly different than Photoshop CS5. In Photoshop CS5, you go right over here to this uh, little eyedropper tool, and the ruler tool was hidden in with the eyedropper tool. Kind of a weird place to go for it. You'd click on your layer, and you'd click and drag on your line that you wanted to straighten your image off of, and you'd press straighten layer. I ooh. Look at that. Okay, I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you that you should link your layers. So what I've got in this group, I made a group and I did a lot of editing in that group. So <clears throat> you need both of those to be linked in order for that to work appropriately so that it's not just straightening the layer. We told it to straighten layer zero. We didn't tell it to straighten group one. So now that they're linked, I'll go ahead and click back on layer zero and do the same thing. I did that on purpose. Uh, sometimes I do things accidentally and I'm like, oh, man, that was an accident, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you that. Pretty cool. Link your layers. If you know you're going to be doing something to uh, a layer that you want to happen to both layers, like moving them, uh, say you've got text and you've got a lot of, of effects on the text and you want to move the effects in the text together, link them together so you can move them easily. Okay, so you notice that when we use the ruler tool and press straighten layer, what it does in Photoshop CS6 is just straighten the layer. What they've done in Photoshop CS6 is kind of put it in a more, um, I guess, uh, logical place, yeah, if you want to say that, in the crop section. So in the crop section, you can get to the crop tool by pressing C or the little uh, crop icon. You go to this little level up here, click on that level, and go ahead and make that line on your image. So there we go, we've got our crop. It's, it's showing us what it's going to crop. In Photoshop CS5, it would just crop it, and then you, you kind of stuck with what it gave you. But you can see that the default crop is making this church very central, and I don't really like that. I want it to be offset a little bit, offset to the left or to the right for the rule of thirds purposes, right? So I'm going to go ahead and move that crop off to the, to the right a little bit and then up above a little bit, and now I'm going to press OK. So you're thinking, why would you select that as your crop? You've got some nastiness going on on the top and some nastiness going on on the bottom. You're right, I do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control, Shift, Alt, and E. That is Command, Option, Shift, and E for you Mac heads. And now I've got a stamp of the layer. The reason why I made a stamp of the, of the images below, basically what that means is that uh, it's, it's making a, uh, a, like a thumbprint of what's happened below. So if I click off of this, you're not going to see anything. If I click below, you're not going to see those edits going away either. If I unclick this, then you'll start to see those edits going away. This is a stamp of everything that's happening below it, and I did that because I want to do some non-destructive editing on what I've got going on below. So what I'm going to do to get rid of these is show you two methods of getting rid of these uh, nasty things up here. I'm going to show you the clone stamp tool, which is one way you can fix things pretty simply, and I'm also going to show you um, content aware fill. So I'm going to press Alt and click on the cloud. If you've never used a clone stamp tool before, when you click Alt and click on an area, you can then click and drag and it'll sample everything below that area and everything that you dragged over that is similar. So you can make a uh, pretty well blended um, stamp. Now the problem is that it takes everything with it. Um, it's not content aware. It doesn't take a sampling of that area. It takes exactly what it is that you're telling it to do, and it samples it. So what you can see here is we've got what looks like three little pieces that all look the same. Go back on that clone stamp tool and select another random area and get rid of that because that is a dead giveaway to anyone who knows anything about clone stamping that you clone stamped some area. These two areas look exactly the same, right? So click somewhere else and just get rid of it. Um, you can also use the patch tool to get rid of those areas and the patch tool is kind of like a content aware fill area so what I'm going to do down here on the side is use content aware fill to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to grab that area that is making all kinds of nastiness over there and I'm going to go shift and F5 which will bring me to the uh, fill selection I'm going to go to content aware and press OK Hopefully it gives me a good selection. Sometimes the content aware doesn't work so well, and other times it works real well. And it did work very well for this purpose, other than the fact that it took a little bit of this building and put it up here. That's not that big of a deal though, because we can just we can go back into our clone stamp and we can select an area and just kind of get rid of it and make that look as if 
I got tree stumps in the middle of a tree with no other tree. Hmm. Okay. Not looking too bad, huh? It, it that that did a pretty good job. Now what I, I'm saying here is that this is a line that would that should go all the way across the street. So again, I'm going to take that clone stamp tool. And what I love about what they did in CS5 and also in CS6 is make it so when you when you press Alt and you click on the area, it now gives you a visual of the area that you're selecting. Also, so we'll go ahead and put that line back in on the street. Again, this is another area that looks very uh, uh, almost like a pattern. And that's what happens when you use a clone stamp or content aware. It almost makes a pattern look going on here. So I'm going to get rid of that too. So I'm going to sample from another area and just kind of um, cover that up a little bit. See here, it's kind of making a stair step looking thing going on over here. That shouldn't be like that either. These are dead giveaways to anyone who knows anything about, about uh, content aware or the clone stamp and they're gonna pick it out and they're gonna find it so you wanna make sure you cover your tracks pretty well on that so that people can't really tell alright now I could get picky and get, get clean up all those areas because all three of those little humps look the same but I'm not gonna get that into it now the other thing I wanna show you and the last thing I wanna show you after you have straightened out an image once you straighten an image you're shifting shifting all of the pixels in that image and when you shift all the pixels in the image you kind of make it a little blurry it throws off the sharpening so now you want to resharpen your image so go ahead and press Control j or command j to duplicate the layer switch that to um, actually before i switch it to soft light i'm just going to go ahead and do the high pass to show you something go to high pass and make that around you know anywhere between 8 and 10 it's a pretty high uh, high resolution image so 8 to 10 will be all right now the reason why I didn't go to soft light before going into the high pass was because I want to show you that there is some color right now on that church from the high pass. So I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to press Control Shift U, which is Command Shift U for Mac people, and go ahead and uh, change that to soft light now. Now I've got my sharpened image. Let's look at the before and after that. Okay, we can definitely have a sharpened image now. So that's straightening your photos in Photoshop CS6, slightly different from Photoshop CS5, um, but in a nutshell there you go I hope you have a great weekend I hope this tutorial helps you uh, I know it, it it would have helped me because I, it took me quite some time to find that take care everyone I will see you next week or you will hear me next week <laughs>